Announce the upcoming programs. Then after that, we will have uh, announcements from the floor. These must be announcements of, of the neighborhood or community interest. No speeches at that time. And I will introduce the, the panel of speakers. We'll talk for about an hour or so on tonight's topic. And after that, we will have questions and answers. Again, no speeches. This is like Jeopardy. Questions must be in that form. Otherwise, you're going to have somebody hollering at you. What's your question? And after that, Tim's going to portion out the time, and each of you can give them a chance to talk to you a lot of time. The speaker, which is what we would prefer, will also talk about anything that you want to give me a lot of time. And then the speaker will get the next word. All right, Charlie, it's time for community, it's time for the upcoming programs. All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,706 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, a reminder once again that we maintain a Google email group, which we recommend that you sign up for subscribe to. We also maintain a meetup group, which functions in the same fashion. You will get one or two notices in advance of each program. Uh, not much traffic, no clutter. So that is the first activity. Everyone should make certain that they have the appropriate status as a member of either one of those. Uh, please, Everyone online, please mute yourself, at least during the presentation. That means a red X on the microphone. I would also ask those of us in attendance in person, please, at least during the presentation, maintain a lower level of comments because it is picked up uh, and it somewhat drowns out the speaker. So please confine your conversations uh, while the presentation is in progress. Okay, now, although I am not a capitalist, I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. Next week, March 11th, we have a group that has not been to the college before, the Community Renewal Society. Should be a good program. Uh, for community activists of any persuasion. Following that, on March 18th, our own regular Marie Perez will be discussing social media and censorship rules and regulations and private ownership issues. Social media, March 18th. March 25th is presently open. I am in progress of putting together a program concerning the mayoral runoff election. So the program is in progress. The election is on April the 4th. So everyone should be engaged at that time. But I'm putting together a program. If you're interested in getting involved in some fashion, please let me know. Uh, the next program after that, Transitioning into April is another group that has not been to the college. Nuke watch. Nuke watch. Watch out for nukes. 
whether they're in a nuclear reactors or nuclear missiles. Interesting program. Anyone, this was, that's a part of our first of our, our uh, um, Earth Day series of speakers. Um, the next two dates are open the 18th um, and the 25th. We're looking to book some, some eco groups. I've got some invitations pending. And on April the 22nd, yours truly, will be, I'll be presenting Chuck's eco plan. My eco plan to reconfigure the use of a car in Chicago and across the nation for that matter, and how to achieve equity among the travel modes. Double so that's me. April 22nd. Two last things. We maintain a lecture library of previous programs, which you are invited to take a look at. We also maintain a library collection of PowerPoint presentation, as well as links to free films of oh. general interest to the College of Complex Community or referenced by some of our speakers. Hey, Charlie, did you get last week's plan? Because I don't see it up. I sent it up, sent you the link. The link, I'm sorry, I did not hear you. I, you, you forgot to put up last week's program. I sent you the no, link. No, sir, I did not receive it. I will look for it. Okay, I'll make sure you get it today then when this one goes up. Because this Sorry, up. I did not see it. It was up since last Saturday night. Okay, anyway, go ahead, Charlie. Sorry about that. I'm done. Thank you very much. All right, any go other ahead. else? Any other? Uh... All right, Dave, why don't you go up and introduce our speaker and then we'll get going on this stuff. All right, any other announcements? Hearing none, nice we have with us several speakers, including Jay Becker, who are going to talk about the abortion controversy. So we give it up for Jay and her compatriots. Okay. All right, Jay, you're all set. So we are here tonight. Next week is International Women's Day, a day that is celebrated around uh, the world, not so much here in the United States. But last year on March 8th, Rise Up for Abortion Rights, the group that I am speaking on behalf of tonight launched a nationwide struggle aimed at stopping the Supreme Court from overturning the right to abortion in this country. In the months that followed, tens of thousands of young women, older women, women from Latin America, and people of all genders and walks of life joined us in the street. High school, even some middle school students walked out, some here in Chicago, Small towns in Iowa, New York, California, around the country, high schools and colleges took part, not millions, but tens of thousands repeatedly, and often with the support of their teachers and parents. Ultimately, however, this resistance was not powerful enough to stop the Supreme Court. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we got it, Raj. We can hear you. Okay. Thanks. When the supermajority of Christian fascist judges, justices overturned women's fundamental right to abortion yet last year, they claimed they would leave the matter up to the states. First, this decision was illegitimate because in any case, because a woman's right to decide for herself when and whether to have a child is fundamental to her very humanity. Denying this right anywhere is an assault on women's status as full human beings everywhere. When a right is subject to local public opinion, it is no longer a right, but a privilege that can be and will and has been taken away. Worse, as Rise Up for Abortion Rights warned from our very founding, it was never the intent of these Christian fascists to simply leave abortion, quote, up to the states. Abortion has long been the battering ram of an entire fascist program of violently reasserting white supremacy, male supremacy, 
and anti-immigrant xenophobia. They have made it clear for decades now that they intend to criminalize abortion across the country and their assault on abortion rights has only escalated in recent months. Everyone probably knows about the 20 states that have essentially banned abortion, some with a very few exceptions that are unworkable and only put in the bills for show. What that means in reality is less well publicized. Women with fetuses with such abnormalities that they cannot survive, but the women are denied the standard medical care, which is an abortion. Instead, they're forced to carry a dying and sometimes dead fetus until their own life is at risk. And when is that? Who decides that? Why, the lawyers on the hospital board, not the doctors. We've read stories and stories of women reporting that they felt like a coffin as they traveled hundreds of miles with a dead fetus in their womb, seeking what has been until this year normal, humane medical care. And we don't even know how many women are affected by these cruel laws, or what health impacts they have already suffered, or how many women and girls have simply been forced to carry an unwanted, unwanted pregnancy to term. The common estimate is at least 100,000. 100,000 women whose plans and dreams for their lives have been dashed who may have been forced to stay in an abusive relationship because of the unwanted pregnancy, who may have lost their jobs and their ability to care for the children they already have, who have slid deeper into poverty and even despair. That's why we fight for abortion on demand and without apology, because it's true. Without this basic right, women can't be free. And all of that is just a horrible beginning. Several states are now considering legislation that will require internet service providers to block any website that provides information about abortions, about abortion funds, about abortion laws or medications. And some of those laws will empower citizens to sue such internet, internet service providers if they allegedly fail to block those websites. Right now, four states are considering bills that will classify abortion as homicide. And some of those states still have the death penalty. All of this is being felt most harshly by the millions of women in states where abortion has already been banned, like Wisconsin, like Ohio, like Tennessee, like Kentucky, all around it. But this reducing women to second class status is no less true in the states like Illinois where abortion is still legal. It's just that we haven't been hit directly yet, but that could change soon. Right now, a Trump appointed federal judge in Texas, Amarillo, Texas, Matthew Kasmarek, is being asked to revoke FDA Food and Drug Administration approval for Mifepristone one of the two bills used in medication abortion regimen. This drug has an outstanding record for safety, better than Tylenol or Viagra, and for efficacy, 98%, a record established for more than 23 years. If this judge does side with the plaintiffs and revokes FDA approval, it could immediately and severely limit, if not curtail, the availability of mifepristone everywhere in the country. That means the availability of medication abortion everywhere in the country. An absent major public outcry, such a decision would almost certainly be upheld by this Supreme Court. Given that medication abortions make up more than half of all abortions in the country, the widespread unavailability of mifepristone would mean that only surgical abortions would be available. That would simply overwhelm abortion providers everywhere, creating long waiting lists, even in states where abortion is legal. This would mean that thousands of women and girls would be unable to get the abortions they need and instead be forced to have a child against their will. Last year, Rise Up for Abortion Rights said, a blue wave is not enough. 
we need a green wave for abortion rights. Let's take Kansas for example for an example of that, where a massive get out the vote campaign defeated a right wing attempt to eliminate their state constitutional protection for abortion. Given that, that Kansas, like Illinois, is surrounded by a lot of forced birth states, this was great news for women there and far beyond. Too bad about that, that vote, though. Chris Kobach, Christian fascist attorney general of Kansas, is plowing ahead with his effort to override it and the law. Just this week, he and 19 other attorney, state attorneys general succeeded in pressuring the second biggest pharmacy chain in the country, Walgreens, to stop distributing mifepristone in their state. Completely contrary to the law, on completely invalid and unlawful grounds. That's why Rise Up for Abortion Rights was out in front of Walgreens Chicago headquarters yesterday condemning their craven capitulation and compliance before the fact with fascist denial of women's rights. A very dangerous precedent that we all need to stand up for. Sansara Taylor, the co-initiator, one of the co-initiators at Rise Up for Abortion Rights and co-host of the Revolution Nothing Less show on YouTube, pointed out that Walgreens' decision not to carry legally protected abortion medication is a craven capitulation to the Christian fascist war on women at the same time that a federal judge in Texas is poised to pull one of the most common and safest abortion medications off the market nationwide. Join us in the streets on International Women's Day to fight for legal abortion on demand and without apology everywhere. Or will we remain silent? adjusting to another leap in the drive to force women back into open patriarchal subordination by using the state to force them to have children against their will. Will we just comfort ourselves in this acquiescence with the hope that this assault will stop here? It won't, or will we resist? Will we stand with women around the world rising up for their rights and their lives? As we wrote in our founding statement, the violent subjugation of half of society must not be accommodated, excused, downplayed, or surrendered to. It must be stopped, and we must stop it. We call on everyone to rise up with women around the world fighting for their freedom. And what better time than International Women's Day? Manifest in green everywhere. Wear the green bandana for abortion rights that was first popularized by the courageous women in Latin America. We call on everyone who cares about the future of women and girls, the rights of LGBTQ people, and justice overall to join us in the streets this International Women's Day, Wednesday, March 8th, here in Chicago, rally at 3 p.m. at State in Jackson to declare forced motherhood is female enslavement. We demand legal abortion without apology everywhere. Rise up for abortion rights. Thank you. Okay. Wanna, all right. You want to introduce your co-host? Yeah. Our my compañera is Patricia Wallen, and she's going to talk more about the green wave in Latin America and why green is the color of abortion rights worldwide. Okay, you're on, Patricia. Yeah, thank you, Jay. So hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Wallin, and I'm originally from El Salvador, where abortion is illegal already under any circumstances. And abortion has been illegal in El Salvador since 1998. And there are no exceptions for cases of rape, incest, or when the woman's life is in danger. And as a result, women who are seeking out abortions or their experiences miscarriages, they can be charged with aggravated homicide and they face lengthy prison sentences. And this is why I became an activist for abortion rights, taking every opportunity that I had to denounce publicly the horrible situation for women's rights in El Salvador. 
So I want to share with you that last year um, on March 8th, which is the International Women's Day, it was the first time that I marched with Rise Up for Abortion Rights. And I continued to join them over the next few months. Um, and then I realized that this was the only group protesting, protesting in the streets, the fact that our Supreme Court was plotting to take away our constitutional right to choose in confidentiality with a doctor, with our doctor, what to do with our own bodies. So this past summer, with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, I saw the US heading down an all too familiar path that I have experienced at first hand. Women in El Salvador, we already know the dire consequences of taking away and criminalizing, criminalizing access to safe abortion. Currently in El Salvador, there are women serving prison sentences of up to 40 years of abortion related charges. And these women often, they come from marginalized communities and have limited access to healthcare services, including <coughs> contraception and safe abortion care. The criminalization of abortion in El Salvador has created this culture of fear and stigma surrounding reproductive health care, where women are forced to resort to dangerous and often deadly methods to terminate unwanted pregnancies. But unfortunately, this horrendous reality is the current reality across many countries in Latin America and other parts of the world. And if I can leave you with something tonight is that women in Latin America they're not, stay, they're not staying silent. They're fighting tirelessly for their right to decriminalize abortion. Uh, I don't know, have you heard about the green wave? Well, the green wave, like Jay was saying, is this social movement that emerged from Latin America advocating for the legalization of abortion and also for the recognition of reproductive rights as human rights. This movement takes its name from the green handkerchief, the green bandana, which has become a symbol of the movement and is often worn by um, all supporters. So in Latin America, women in millions have taken to the streets to demand abortion rights, wearing green and the green bandana. <laughs> and countries like Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, they have succeeded in gaining abortion rights. Really, we're really happy for them, for the success to take to the streets and fight for their rights and win these rights for them. This is what's called the green wave. Uh, but now, shockingly, we find ourselves in the US stripped of what we held as our constitutional and fundamental right to safe abortion. So now we need a green wave of our own. So if you care about justice and you care about women, please join us as we continue to take to the street because we need to make our voices heard. So thank you. Okay, is that it? All right, my name is Tim. I'm going to help moderate our question and answer session tonight. Um, we'll take questions from the peanut gallery in the audience and from the uh, Zoom thing. We're going to ask our speaker to come up front and uh, take questions. Um, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is, since the microphone's up here, is when I turn the camera on you, uh, make sure that you... Uh, we can see you and uh, you know make sure that we can uh, you know hear you clearly. Tim, so, Tim, why don't they go up and uh, yes? Because that's we've never done that before. Well, and you don't turn the camera. Just ask the question. Leave the speaker up there. Please knock it off. No, the way we've always done it. The speaker stays up there, and you ask the question. That's all. All right. Who's got the first question? Or you want to come up and just, just so we can hear you clearly. 
Okay, who, who, okay, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll get you in a minute. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you can stay there if you want. Just go ahead and ask a question. Oh, oh, well, if they want to, go ahead. Yeah. Um, my question was um, usually on the map, Illinois is a blue state. Are we surrounded by red anti abortion states? Or is there a ban at every single border? Uh, the question was Is Illinois completely surrounded by uh, states with abortion bans? It's a little complicated. The simple answer is yes. There is a ban in Indiana, but it's currently um, being stayed by the court. We don't know how it's gonna end up, but the, the Indiana State Supreme Court is not a very friendly place for abortion. Um, we don't really border Michigan. Michigan still has a right to abortion, but it's restricted. Wisconsin had a trigger ban from 1849. Uh -huh. Before women could vote, so I'm, slave I'm, I'm, I'm open. Okay, so don't don't that, talk from there. That, sure, it's... that ban went into effect the day Roe was overturned. Iowa has a ban that is partially being stayed. Um, Missouri has some of the worst criminalization in the country. Kentucky, Tennessee, all very bad. It's basically Minnesota up here and Illinois. For the for the and Michigan sort of in between for the upper Midwest. So it, the short answer is yes, with some complications. Okay, Raj, you got you got your hand up. Go ahead. Yes. Question. Yes, 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 yes. I have a question. Uh, this is this is a Women's International Day, and uh, there are lots of issues of women, including within their family within their society, beyond abortion, even in a marriage or, or in, a, in a husband and wife, uh, uh, sometime of violence, family violence, and uh, ch children's abuse, and uh, women, women's right at work and everywhere else. So why, do, why are we focusing so much on abortion? I mean, I know it is an important issue, but uh, we need to, we need to have a, there are lots of problems women internationally and domestically, and including them, their marriage stability, including uh, those old elder women who are trying to find uh, a, somebody to live with, and a women population being, being four times as much as men. Okay. And, and we, we need to discuss all those issues also. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and respond to that if you can. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll narrow that down to um, why focus on abortion when there's so many other things that uh, obstacles facing women. And that's a valid question. Uh, I think rise up for abortion rights. I have not spent my life fighting for abortion. It's part of the movement for abortion before it was legal. I don't think until mm, 10 years ago, I was so sure that it wouldn't always be legal, like most people in this country. But as our poster says, ab abortion is freedom. Without, it's not, it is the bottom line and the front line of women's ability to participate fully in society. It doesn't solve every other problem, but it is the bottom line. If you look at uh, women's participation in the wake of Roe, which was decided in 1973. When Roe was decided, when I grew up, you look in the uh, want ads and you had help wanted male and help wanted female. It was a segregated society. Women made up 1% of students in law school when I went to high, to high school, certainly. Now women are the majority in law school. Women are, are making huge gains in every profession. That doesn't mean it's equality, obviously not. A new study, women make 80 cents on the dollar for the same work. It's not over with, but that is not a coincidence that women's ability to control their reproduction was critical to making those advances. And this movement is coming after birth control too. Don't be mistaken about that. They are after birth control as well as abortion. Women are, it is violent male supremacy 
with the power of the government to enforce it, that this is all about. And without that, women are not going to be free to participate. Okay, so That's you, simple as that. So yeah, you had a question. I'll allow it said. What, what part is the right wing in the United States play in Latin America in the anti-abortion? Um, Patricia, do you want to, what, what role does the right wing groups and individuals in the United States, what role do they play in Latin America in anti-abortion? Can you hear us, Patricia? Well, you know, it's like, I mean, when they, like I just said, like abortion rights are, um, criminalized in uh, abortion is just forbidden in El Salvador and other parts of Latin America. And, you know, women are fighting. Women are fighting every day, doing what they can to gain their right. And then when decisions like this, you know, come from powerful countries like the US, it does affect, <laughs> It does affect other countries and, and because of the message they're sending, they're sending the message that I remember thinking, just feeling horrible because I had been fighting for abortion rights in El Salvador because the, the situation that was there. And now here in the US, the situation is like this. And when this decision came, it, it just felt horrible, you know, the ripples that this decision did for the countries, it was devastating because it's saying that it's the message that they're sending is that what countries like El Salvador are doing, they're saying that these laws are okay. It's reinforcing, you know, to the government that what they're doing to women in El Salvador is what it's okay, it's what they should be doing because people look, look to it the United States as a country of progress. I don't know, Jay. Yeah, I just add a couple um, points to that. When uh, Patricia and I were both in Washington, D.C. in the weeks leading up to the Supreme Court decision, protesting in front of the Supreme Court building, and one of the uh, people, women who were with us is, is someone from Colombia. And a year ago, January, Colombia, they had a huge green wave movement there and they succeeded in decriminalizing abortion. And this year in January, they had a big, um, big celebration, the first anniversary. And she said the day that the Supreme Court took away our right to abortion, the right wingers in Colombian legislature uh, initiated a bill to with to overturn their abortion law. It was symbolic, but it symbolized exactly that point that the that the, that Patricia was making that the U.S. has inordinate uh, influence in Latin America. Also, uh, another fact: when um, El, when civil society in El Salvador sued at the um, the court of the Organization of American States sued the Salvador for their abortion rights. The country of El Salvador was defended by some of the same right-wing United States groups that uh, brought the lawsuit to the Supreme Court and took away all of it. So they were a direct role in fighting to maintain uh, the ban on abortion, the criminalization of abortion in El Salvador. It's a good question. Okay, Charlie, we're gonna go next. You got your hand up. Yes, uh, uh, let me get my screen. Jay, uh, before the Supreme Court decision on a state by basis, there were also about 20 states, I believe, had these procedural obligations that you had to fulfill in order to get an abortion. Subsequent to the Supreme Court decision, have these gotten even worse or, I mean, I, regarding an outright ban, but have they gotten stiffer? Is basically what's going on at the statewide level regarding procedural rule and regulations? Now, are you talking about Illinois? Any state in general. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> yeah, you pick out the 
you know, ones that come to mind? Most states have gotten worse. Um, there were 14 states that had what they called trigger laws on the books, which meant that they were laws passed that if Roe were ever overturned, that state would immediately um, outlaw abortion. A lot of states had those here in Illinois. We had a lot of protests to um, force uh, Ra no, who, what was it? Was it Rauner? That Ra Ra Rauner. Rauner. To, Rauner had promised to do away with that trigger ban. And then when he got in the governorship, he didn't. So we had a lot of protests and that was removed from the books in Illinois. Um, but in many states, like in Wisconsin, that remained. Um, so those states are like the dark ages. Um, other states, um, it, it's only gone from bad to worse. Uh, some of them, like Michigan, have stayed more or less the same, but every state is a battleground. And what these, uh, the Christian fascists are doing, going after, for instance, abortion medication nationwide, that will be a disaster for everyone, including here in Illinois. Um, like the first question about being surrounded by states where abortion is unavailable, that would mean that if medication abortion is not available, the clinics could no way on earth provide the abortions that will be sought, that will be needed. It will be a disaster. Waiting lists will be so long that it will become medically and legally too late for many women and girls. So um, while this, the state level is changing every day, um, I, 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 I read about it every day and you cannot even keep up with it, the restrictions that are being put in place. Thank you. Okay. All right. Who's next on the questions? All right, Jan, if you want to go, go ahead and speak loudly, please. I'll repeat this question. That's Patricia. Patricia, do you want to speak to that? You might want I mean, to repeat the question. Were you able to hear it, Patricia? Um, someone went to these countries. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That, that right wing um, religious uh, groups from the United States uh, try to work the population in Latin America. Um, of course, they've been uh, preceded by the Catholic Church, which has indoctrinated. Uh, the population against abortion on birth control for generations. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the image, I think Latin America is a very mixed picture because they also have some of the most progressive government and they are making, they are going forward on women's rights and uh, abortion rights while the US is going backwards. But what do you wanna add Patricia? Oh yes, I. You know, it's the the at least for El Salvador, it's the Catholic Church who's advocating. In the first place, they're advocating. Um, this is when 
the left uh, political party was trying to uh, legalize abortion again it was the catholic church who came and spoke against it you know so it's it's very divided it's so many countries in latin america are not like countries like other countries like argentina that they're more progressive these countries in latin america they're heavily religious you know the majority of people in El Salvador are against abortion because of religious um, beliefs. All right. Yes. And uh, I wanted to add for the other question too, that uh, the effects too, it also affected because people, uh, organizations took away their uh, funding and a lot of people were really scared for the decisions in the US and a lot of clinics, a lot of support, a lot of funds. Um, left El Salvador, so it did affect greatly. Um, they took away support, contraception, just care for pregnant women because of, um, they were scared, you know, to end up in jail. Doctors end up in jail in El Salvador. They found to be helping people with abortion, so. Okay. Really? I just wanna um, point out, Go to our website, rise up number four, abortionrights.org. We have a whole section of photographs and some basic history of what's going on in Latin America where the women truly are rising up. We took the green, we take our inspiration from them on a massive scale. I mean, flooding the streets, um, just persisting, being in the schools, being in civil societies, not giving up it takes years until they win their right to abortion. And now we we need to follow the same path. So I just want to point out these mm -hmm. pictures. All right, go ahead. Yes, I, um, yeah, thanks, Jay. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, we used to work together on um, refused fascism. And, uh, and so I didn't know um, how did this, how did you evolve from refused fascism to this? and. Uh, uh, Refuse Fascism still exists. Uh, we have a weekly podcast that I strongly recommend that goes in, takes up abortion, but all kinds of uh, um, uh, issues. Um, this student walkout in Florida against some of DeSantis's anti-diversity um, rules. They had the uh, interview of those students um, and people working on immigration rights. So Refuse Fascism still exists. Some of the same people um, were part of initiating Rise Up for Abortion Rights because, as Richard Fascism has said all along, abortion is the battering ram of this fascist move. That, so they can propose as pro life and pro babies and all the rest of it, whereas in fact, it's just forced birth and it's pro violent patriarchy and stripping women of their. Uh, full humanity. So, and, and it's very much canceled, as I know you are aware, to denying LGBTQ rights. The, one of the um, Supreme Court opinions in favor of Dobbs of overthrowing uh, abortion rights, written by Clarence Thomas, said we should reconsider. We should reconsider Griswold, the Supreme Court decision that, that removed restrictions on birth control. Used to be birth control, either you had to be 18 or 21, depending on what state, or you had to be married and your husband's consent to get birth control. But he wants to reconsider that decision. He wants to reconsider the decision that made uh, same sex marriage legal. He wants to reconsider, he wants to reconsider Love v. Virginia, the decision that outlawed miscegenation law. Seriously, this is a part of a program. And their, their uh, lawlessness is apparent in that decision. It's apparent in their um, pressure campaign against Walgreens that's based on complete misstatement of the law. Um, so it's, it is very much bound up. But again, because abortion is the battering ram, okay. we, some of us felt this is, this is where we have to put our attention. Unfortunately, we weren't able to to win yet. Okay, so go ahead. Like, 
Loud said. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was. All right, all right. Let me get you. Let me get you on there and uh, go ahead and uh, talk. Go ahead. You're you're up. All right. Thanks. Um, had a couple of questions. So earlier in your presentation, you talked about um, I think in the Latin American context, one of the bad things is they want homicide um, or something like that's that. That's in the U.S. That, that's in the U.S. Okay. So I just want to make I just want to make sure um, in those cases where somebody kills a pregnant woman. Are you in favor of removing it as a double homicide? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Um, Fetal personhood is a very dangerous theocratic concept. Okay. It was part of Dobbs, and that's what those kinds of laws. Georgia has that law now. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I, I will look forward to your advocacy on that front. Um, as far as um, this slogan, forced motherhood is female enslavement, I, I think I disagree with that. I think that's a, a, a problem because I think that there's going to be consistency there. Um, so let me ask you this, is forced fatherhood male enslavement? And what I'm referring to there is the decision to carry a baby to term is exclusively the woman's. Okay, fine. I'm not disputing that. But if it's exclusively the woman's decision, then I would presume that you guys would be in favor of eliminating mandatory child support laws. Would that be would that be a fair would that be a fair presumption, or are you both in favor of women having the exclusive decision, and if they decide to have the baby, they can put the man on on the financial hook for eighteen years? I'm not Rise Up for Abortion Rights does not have a position on that. There's no equivalence to the government forcing a woman to carry a fetus to term against her will with all of what that takes out of her body, with the danger, the risk. Having abortion, carrying a fetus to term has many times over greater risks to the woman's health and even to her survival, okay? And black and brown women even more so. There's just no equivalence. The man is having sex with a woman, he's going to bear part of the responsibility too. Sorry, I, that's my personal opinion, okay? And you want to talk about female enslavement? One of the arguments against, uh, one of the arguments in favor of Roe that feminist legal scholars made back then and are making again is that the 13th Amendment, the 13th Amendment applies involuntary servitude. That forcing a woman against her will to carry a fetus to term is involuntary servitude, and they were right. Okay, it doesn't mean chattel slavery, but it is servitude. It is enslavement, and there's no comparison to uh, a father. Sorry. Well, yeah, forcing, so, a man, um, forcing a man for 18 years to pay for a child that he does not consent to paying for. That well, is then he can keep to, his dick in yeah. his pants. Sorry. Well, she can keep her legs closed. Oh, no, I mean, I mean, garbage. If he can there's risk out. involved and yeah. he can carry the risk just as much as the woman does, okay? No, he's not See. off the hook. This is my personal opinion. Okay, okay. no, that's fine. Okay. I got it. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just, it's just, no, sorry, sorry. All right. I, you know, okay. it, 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 responsible as a woman for birth control. I have to ask, I have to ask the obvious question. Why, okay. you know, I mean, the obvious question is it takes two to tango. Right. Why can't we as a society restrain ourselves and not have the problem in the first place? Oh, come on. One problem is birth control is not 100% effective. Right. It, it, it just isn't. Birth control pills, let alone other things. And I just have to point out, these same anti-abortion Christian fanatics, they want to do away with IUDs because they consider IUDs abort abortion tools because they prevent potentially 
a, uh, a fertilized egg from implanting in, in the walls of the uterus. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And IUDs are some of the most effective birth control. So it's not a, it's not honestly, I don't think it's really mainly about restraint. It's making sex education available to everyone, including young people. And that they're trying to wipe out. It's making birth control available and the knowledge of birth control. And they're trying to wipe that out. So, uh, you know, people will, you know, love can be a beautiful thing. Okay, you Jim, wanna go yeah. next? Jim, do you mind ask question? Well, we'll get to you, Raj, in a minute. There were some people in the audience that was okay. trying to get to first. I know you and Charlie have your hand up. We'll get to you next. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, Loud. made me think of, um, I've read, and nobody, most people don't know, that John Roberts and Alito in 1981 were planning to put Roe versus, uh, challenge Roe versus Wade. I mean, this has been a plot since 1981. And I, have y'all thought of doing more with the, the law schools, you know, I, it seems that they're, you know, the Federalist Society and this whole movement is, we don't, they're, they're not held accountable for being, most people don't know this is where it started, right? We like, need to expose that. Right, right, that's really true. So well, and true. they all um, dissembled in their uh, hearings hear? before they were appointed to the Supreme Court, yeah. as you know. They all said, oh, well, Roe was the president. Yeah, right, that president. Mm -hmm. But now they're bringing things to the state, even to boycott the best sanctions now. Are you going to ask a question or not? Charlie will not, they're, they're, they're engaged in dialogue. Let them finish. Well, we don't have dialogue. We have questions. Charlie, well, we got some more in the audience. We've got some people who haven't asked a question. Okay, yet. yeah, let's please go ahead. You want All to right, my up? question is, I have been in English, the stuff we talk with my whole life. I've got a master's in many years. Personal things to show that I had some success. And I, for the life of me, as long as I can remember, proudly dare to get up and use the words that you use. It just makes me sick. What you use, like civil uh, disobedience or, or civil uh, fascism, that's a most electric. Wild word I've ever heard. Or, but then you turn around and say, but poor little old, poor little old lady, she has to give in all of her self over to the men because they they beat on them with all the words and everything. And you make it look like there's a bunch of thugs out there, which there probably are, but not all of them and not what you think they are and not in the extreme of some of the reasons. Why can't you talk about it like a human being, not like some devil trying to get in there and set everybody a fire so you can have your way? No way. No way at all. I have had five children. I have in five years, one died. I did not use birth control or any other thing. But after five years of it, it got harder each time. So I decided that any further children, the Pope can get. I didn't want them. But did I kill them? No, because it's a sin and a crime. If you don't like sin, I'll use the, the more educated word, the N word. Uh, you don't have sin anymore, you wouldn't crime. It's a crime to kill a, a, another human being. It's a crime to kill a pregnant mother. But how many crimes are you committing? Are you committing one or are you committing two? It's, a, it's just as much for a child to go and beat the mother over the head with a dad or something to kill the mother. Then it's a crime. <laughs> the child, even if it's underage, will live to be grow up and be in some place and then it'll prove it. Why is it okay to go in and take some something that's going to kill the fetus, kill the baby? That baby is a person 
it's just as much a person as you are, except you're older and you think wiser, but I think you're more cool. Okay. Okay, well, so we've I, got two I would, questions. I would like an answer. I, I would I'll like to answer. Let me give it a go. Uh, okay. A fetus is not a baby. It is a fetus. That's true. Am I correct? That a fetus is not a baby. Women are not incubators. And abortion is not murder. That is science. And that is what we base ourselves on. What you have a religious belief. You are welcome to that religious belief. I was raised with it. That is your right. It is not the Supreme Court rights or anybody else's to tell me what I'm going to believe and I'm what I live my you, life on. You're telling me. No, I am saying. I'm committing a crime if I. No, I am not. No, I am not telling anyone how to live their life. I am objecting to the a theocratic regime that is being established in this country just as surely as the Ayatollah in Iran. That is where we are headed. And that is what the Supreme Court is doing. And that's what their counterparts in state after state after state is doing. I don't know if people saw three, two days ago, an urgent appeal was filed with the United Nations on behalf of women and people who can get pregnant in this country. The United States is violating so many international human rights agreements that it has a party to, including, including but not limited to, the right to be free from torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. The freedom of thought, conscience, and religion or belief, equality and non-discrimination, and the freedom to seek, receive, and impart information. All of those rights are under attack and are on the chopping block in this country. You can call it what you want. I call it fascism. When the law doesn't matter to these people. Read the decision in Dobbs. They don't care about 50 years of precedent. There are standards when you're going to overturn a precedent that's existed for that long that people have based their lives on. There are standards that the Supreme Court is supposed to meet. They didn't care. That was out. They didn't even make an attempt to try to meet those standards. I have nothing but respect for people who decide. They agree with your views. They want to raise five, ten children. That is their privilege, their right. That is not their privilege or right to enforce that on anyone else. That's what we're about. So there's absolutely there's it reasons why we call it. Not your right to Next that. question. Charlie, I'm letting them go. I'm letting talk. them go back and forth. Talk. No, no, that's not appropriate. Uh, okay. All right, we're gonna get we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get uh, this guy, and then we'll go to Raj next. Response to pro life is it's a lie. They are not pro life. They're pro forced birth. That's all they're for. These same people are fine with nuclear weapons. They're fine with the death penalty. It's not pro life. So that's my point. There is like a month or two. Hold on. There is a. Absolutely, and that and is their not, freedom. Not, uh, no, I, I, I'm not talking about just individuals and their beliefs. I'm talking about a very powerful movement right. that put several Supreme Court judges on the bench that removed our rights. 
that's what I'm, I'm not talking yeah, about love. people's uh, individual beliefs. People are completely free to have them. Now, uh, Jay, um, can I give the example of El Salvador? Okay, let's, uh, let's, wow. so let me get your spot here. And, uh, um, we'll no, uh, when I, when I, um, when I found out about what the laws were doing okay, to women in El Salvador, because I cannot hear sometimes. That, that was thinking. really heartbreaking because there was a big case that got really popular in El Salvador regarding a woman who was pregnant, but she was sick. I think she had lupus. Um, and the doctors were appealing to the courts in El Salvador about um, letting her have an abortion to save her life. And the people there came to the courts, outside of the courts, wearing their signs. They were pro-life and they were there supporting life. So she should not get an abortion. So the, the baby, uh, well, the, ba the baby was malformed. So the baby didn't have a brain uh, developed and all of that. Um, and she could die if she didn't have an abortion. Well, the baby was, died as soon as he was born and the mom died too. Like Jay was saying, it's not, uh, we're not there for, you know, we're not pro-life, they're being pro-birds. That was my example. Thank you. All right, um, I'll get you Raj next and Charlie get you next. We got another. Two people who haven't asked questions. All right, we got some. Uh, okay, all right, let's get, uh, all right. Uh, yes, I'm ready for you loud, please, if you don't mind. Okay. My question is, um, according to the Abortion Survivors Network, there are about 85,000 babies that have survived abortion since 1973. That said, it is not hard to imagine that there are several tens of thousands of adult abortion survivors walking around in the United States. Assuming you don't wish them to not have survived, what role, my question to you is, what specific role should adult abortion survivors have in the abortion debate? What specific role, if any, should they have survived in the abortion debate? They are free to express their opinions just like anybody else. I don't know that concept. Most, I, honestly, I'm not familiar with it. So I honestly can't. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, do you have a question? Okay, uh, stand up and let's uh, loud. I seem to hear a lot of anti Catholic tradition and the attack. And when you're talking about South America, you're attacking the fact that here you have predominantly Catholic communism. Is it your real problem with the Catholic Church? No, no, it is not. The, uh, there actually is a very active group called Catholics for Choice. Uh, there are, I have very good friends. I was raised Catholic. I have friends. It's not the Catholic Church. It's trying to impose any particular religious belief on the population of the whole. That's the problem. And in some countries where the Catholic Church has that power, it has used its power to do that. In other countries, it could be Islam. I don't care what it is, but I don't want to live in a theocracy. I think that's very uh, damaging to everyone. That's the point. I, I don't think I mentioned uh, Catholicism or the Catholic Church in my speech at all, except to say in Latin America, the Catholic Church has had a great deal of power and the women move, rising up for their abortion rights have had to challenge that power have had to change people's thinking who were let believe that the, they should have that power to dictate what women did with their lives that's the point it's not i have my own personal beliefs but rise up for abortion rights is certainly not anti any religion <laughs> okay um but, uh, all right all right, Ellen, we're going to, we're going to get um, anybody else who hasn't had a question yet? Uh, okay, who else? Another first, first timer back All right, go, go ahead. Thank, thank you, sir. We're loud, please. I just want to say, a lot of people will accept the, whatever you want, carry the different 
Let, let me take the second half first. Most abortions, as far as we know, as of 2020, 54% of abortions were medication abortions, means pills. Um, according to the FDA, you don't have to see a doctor. You can use telemedicine. Some states restrict that. You don't even have to see a doctor, some you do. But you take them at home, generally. Um, they're very effective. I talked about that in my presentation. 98% effective, uh, better safety record than Tylenol, um, very little uh, pain or suffering on the part of the woman within the first 10 weeks is approved by the FDA. So, but the problem is the same groups that uh, petitioned the Supreme Court and overturned our right to abortion are now trying to with, revoke FDA approval of those abortion pills. So they are on the chopping block. One of the reasons we all have to be out there on International Women's Day demanding legal abortion on demand and without apology because we are losing all of it. Now, as far as um, abortions performed later in the term of a pregnancy, almost always those women have carried the baby because they want the baby. They use that almost every time it's because of fetal abnormalities, a dead, the fetus dies at 15, 20 weeks. Those abnormalities, even with the best technology, tend to not even be discernible until 20, 23, 24 weeks. And then that's when the abortions happen. If if it's up to the it's up to the woman and her doctor. Some women decide they want to try to carry till term, even though that means a very uh, traumatic delivery, and take their chances uh, how the the child will end up. Like Patricia talked about, the woman who was denied an abortion even in El Salvador, even though it was clear the baby had no skull. And she was forced to give birth and the baby died as it would, and she died. And this is the kind of thing that is happening now in states like Texas and Tennessee. Women are being forced to carry fetuses with such extreme abnormalities because the doctors are not allowed to give them a DNC, i.e. an abortion. So this, there's a lot of, I'm sorry, there's a lot of mythology about late term abortion. And now the other side of that coin, very few doctors are, are taught or developing the skills to be able to help women in those extreme circumstances. Almost by definition, those, those you, usually it's the husband and wife, that couple wanted that baby. They have a name, they have the baby's uh, uh, room all, they have a crib, they're all ready. And then that late in the term, it, a uh, disaster. So legally speaking, under Roe, it was viability. If the, if the fetus was viable outside the womb, abortion was not legal. And that was around 24 weeks. Even with all of the advances in, medic in medicine, it still stayed around 24 weeks. And then you'd have a pre preemie, but the odds of the, the baby surviving were good. And, and that was where the line was pretty well drawn. And even Casey, the decision in the early 90s that upheld Roe and put that uh, limit on it, uh, viability. So that's a moving target, but it pretty much didn't move for 25 years. It was uh, viability. So that is not my opinion. That has been the law until uh, June 24th, okay, you gotta, you gotta. 2022. All right, we got a little quick follow up on this. Well, late term abortion, can you tell me if you have to go to the hospital? What, what's, what's the, the, uh, the breaking point? There is no breaking point. It's illegal now. I don't, well, I should say there's no, it's, it's, 
state by state. I do not know all across the country. It's so much in flux. But uh, a, an abortion after 12 weeks is definitely a surgical abortion. A pill, it's, it's not a pill, no. So that can be, in some states, many states, it can be performed in a clinic. I believe it's Wyoming or Montana is considering a law to make uh, abortion to shut down clinics and require abortions to be performed in hospitals, regardless of what kind of abortion, which will mean, again, making abortion much harder to get, even if it's legal. They're just clamping down. But in terms of your medical question, yeah, the pills, certainly no later than 12 weeks, most of the time. Okay, Raj, you wanna, you wanna go again at unmute and ask your question, please? Raj? You're, you're up next. Are yes. You... Um, hello. Yes, I'm here. Uh, the, I'm from India. And uh, I remember in my family, my mother was a strong leader. And uh, she advised women. And when, when there is an issue of having a next baby, to a baby or not, and she will talk husband and wife, and decision was made. But uh, not nowadays in India, law is that the family can decide what is best for them. And uh, if they don't want to have a baby and woman is pregnant, they choose a person, then that is their right. I personally believe that individual have a absolute right. And uh, that right should not be violated in America or anywhere else. And uh, abortion and pregnancy should not be issue. The, the, what we are not talking about is that, that a lot of, lots of decision after woman gets pregnant or uh, accidentally gets pregnant within a marriage or without a marriage. And there is, there is a lots of arguments within a family, within husband and wife or mother and family. Sometimes family haven't had a child in a long time, this first child and a parent may push for that. And all these issues are there. And uh, and uh, these issues often, often are tough and hard. Raj, what's and, your question, Raj? And, and so the, 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 we need to discuss the, so what are, what is your advice and what are the, what's going on in that area and uh, how decisions are made and one, who, should, who should decide about that? Thank you. Okay, I think what Raj is asking about is, uh, you know, in India where he's from, there's no restrictions on abortions, but the, but the uh, choice is made in the family. And I think what Raj, if I'm correct, uh, what you wanted to, to ask about was, where does this impact their movement? Am I correct? Yeah, I'm asking you to help, how family, when family have, family have a dispute about to get abortion or not, how, what, what, what extent is that issue is there and how that is decided? I, I think each, each couple, each family would have to figure that out. I, I'm, I'm not a family counselor. I honestly- How, 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 how big is your problem? Country, it's becoming a moot question because there isn't a right to abortion. In ha almost half of the country, there is no effective right to abortion. And in other parts of the country, including, as I said in my presentation, Kansas, where the voters overwhelmingly voted to retain the right to abortion in their state constitution, their attorney general is working overtime to deny them that right. By denying them the abortion pill, that's taking away the right to abortion for the better part of that population, especially for women who live in rural areas where there's not a hospital or a clinic around the corner. Uh, it's a disaster. So these people, and that's part of why I call them fascists. They don't care what the law says. They are going to impose, they are going to use their power to impose their beliefs on anybody and everybody that they can. That's a cornerstone of what fascism is. All right, um, Charlie, we're going to let you go next. Uh, but can I have a question? Okay, Calvin, you go. You haven't had one yet. Go ahead. Um, the question I'd like to ask is: uh, I've watched this uh, unfolding over these years. 
do you think there's any chance of the um, the, the tides turning in, uh, um, away from the anti uh, uh, away from the pro life uh, faction? <laughs> and the second question is, do you think that President Biden could have done more to stop this? And is his Catholicism a factor to play here? Good question. Um, I don't think the tide is going to turn until we move it. That's the problem. Um, if you, again, we take our inspiration from the green wave in Latin America, that was from the ground up. That was a feminist movement. It was uh, women of many different uh, classes and religions, all and different perspectives, all coming together. Um, Patricia can talk about that. Um, and then I'll talk about Biden. Why don't you- Go ahead, Patricia. What's please. gonna change the tide? Oh, what's going to change the tide? Hmm. Well, we know we have been in contact with uh, women from Argentina who won the right for abortion uh, recently, and women in Colombia and Mexico as well. Mexico is not the whole country. They're going state by state. But what they've been telling us is that how they did it was women and men and everyone who cares about women and justice came together and rose up for abortion rights. They have different views, of course. They have different, you know, they can oppose opinions and everything, but for this one issue and for women's well being and for society, they came together. They came together and took to the streets, protested, made their, they made their voices heard. And that's what we need in the US. We need everyone to not stay silent, not, you know, not just sit at home and wait to see what happens. We cannot rely on our politicians anymore. It's up to us, it's up to us and make our voices heard. No matter, you know, if you're from the left, from the right, see if you care about women, we have to unite. Jay. Okay. In response to the question whether uh, Biden and Harris had done enough, um, I think the answer is a resounding no. They did very little. Um, they are claiming now, oh, we didn't know that we didn't really think Roe uh, would be overturned. Everybody knew on May second. Someone released that draft of a decision, which was almost the same as the final decision, and everybody knew then, and they did nothing. They can have a national health emergency for monkeypox, but not for women's reproductive justice. It's outrageous. They have done so little. Um, even the people who submitted this petition to the United Nations uh, said the same. Uh, there's some empty talk and very little of what they actually could have done. Right now, uh, doctors, OBGYN, several medical associations are suing the FDA to get the FDA to loosen up their regulations because the FDA's regulations under the Biden administration are much more, much stricter than medically required. And excuse me, uh, they could open up federal lands to abortion providers. Federal lands exist all over the country. And I'm not talking uh, Indian reservations. Federal lands, they could be opened up so that women could ensure access. Just a few, I'm no policy wonk. Hey, I'll tell you, look at uh, Governor Pritzker's website. Buried in there, he has a list of things that the federal government could do that he put up in July and they haven't done any of them. So it's not just us who's saying that the Biden administration has failed miserably. All they did was talk a good game to get the votes in November and they've done nothing since, I'm sorry. All right, Charlie, you wanna go next? You got it? You've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, I, let me get my straight up. Just let me get my screen up, please. Uh, it's just partially been answered, Jay, already. But is there any, I realize it's a divided Congress. However, is there any legislation 
been introduced, either pro or con, in the U.S. Congress to change the situation? Uh, well, the new Republican majority in the House, one of their, their first bills was an anti-abortion bill to enact a nationwide ban at a certain number of weeks. I can't remember what it was. Um, it didn't, I'm not sure if it passed. It won't, it won't get through the Senate right now. Um, so I don't, nothing is gonna, nothing is gonna happen this term. And you know, and Biden says in his um, State of the Union, if a, uh, abortion bans comes to my desk, I'll veto it. Well, that's honestly, that's cheap talk. He spent 30 seconds during his State of the Union talking about the abortion crisis, 30 seconds. He spent 10 minutes on, on these uh, fake fees thing. He went on and on and on. No, I have nothing against that. But this is a crisis facing women around the country. And after all the hoopla of November, and this was going to save us, they have done nothing. So I, I, I don't see anything happening um, in, in the next year and a half. I, I, we could look backwards, though. Obama ran in 2008 saying that he would codify Roe. It's on film. He said that. When he got in, nothing. He could have done it his first two years easily. The Democrats have said it for 30 years. They've had multiple opportunities and they haven't done it. So yeah, what's going to change? We have to change. We have to change ourselves to change the climate and, and build the green wave in this country. Okay, you're next. Uh, loud. You. Give, give your loud question. When you speak, speak loud, please. Okay. I am a She said, they're not going to be my prayers. I'll, I'll train my children in the kind of religion that I want. Uh, that used to be pretty common in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Pro-choice, anti-abortion. Pro anti-abortion. Oh. Yeah, Pro-choice in the sense that they don't want the government to regulate. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody right. likes abortion. But, yeah, okay. All right, let's get this guy. He's got yes, another question. That Go ahead. used to be a lot more common. In that Loud, please. Circles. Yeah, I got one more question. Um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed that uh, we're talking about enslavement in like the early uh, 1800s, 2000s, whatever. I've already, I've already asked about that. My question is um, speaking of enslavement, um, I think a reasonable, quick definition of enslavement is. Whenever you are forced to labor for someone else's benefit without your consent. I think that's pretty straightforward. And I think that works. And the reason why I bring it up that way is I know that, for example, in Illinois, um, taxpayers are forced to pay for abortions. Now, if 
being forced to labor for someone else's benefit what's without your, your consent. What's your question? If being forced to That's labor good. for someone else's benefit without your consent is enslavement, then I would argue taking my tax money to pay for abortions is another form of enslavement. What do you say to that? Oh, come on. That's libertarian stuff. No, 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 Charlie, shut up. <laughs> That's libertarian nonsense. All right, Charlie, shut up and let her answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the definition of slavery. It's, a woman's body is controlled by the government. It's not just labor for someone. It's, you are you lose the control of your own bodily autonomy and at great potentially fatal cost. It's not the same as taxes. Sorry. All right, I got one more. Mm -hmm. You know, you go, you women, you've got the right to vote in 1920. And ever since, and ever since then, you've been we fought for a long time. And you've, been, you've, been, you've been making a fuss. Tell us your stance on this following quote I'm all for women's live as long as they stay at home to cook and clean. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I really need to comment on that. Yeah, go ahead, Jan. Let's. <laughs> On, on the difference, the difference in mortality among women <coughs> who have abortions through this attendance and women who carry the birth. Oh, uh, the, uh, there's no comparison. I know. There's almost, there's almost, there's almost, I can't, I don't think there's any fatality in a medical abortion. I mean, that, which is almost all no, no, free 10 is, weeks. But it could happen, but it's very, very minuscule. Whereas, especially, it depends on what woman you're talking about. As you know, uh, black women, their uh, both their infant uh, mortality and maternal mortality is some is higher than many quote undeveloped countries in this country. I think I read in Mississippi, a black woman has seventy times the possibility of. Uh, dying from childbirth than a white woman in Mississippi. Absolutely. Because class, as you know, what kind of health care has that woman had her whole life, let alone prenatal? And that's another thing. I can't even get into all the details, but the fact that abortion is illegal has meant that women are not seeking out prenatal care. They're, and, and they are being turned away. For instance, in Mississippi, we've had many stories of women trying to get prenatal care and the hospital doesn't want to touch them until they're past 10 weeks because they're worried about their legal liability it's it's just um horrendous i don't i don't have all the statistics with me printed but yes carrying a, a fetus to term is carries with it much greater risks than an abortion um, Scientific American published a study, gosh, was it right around right around the time Dobbs, sometime last year, right around the time Dobbs was overturned, um, that Roe was overturned, that they actually did, a, they developed a scientific study where they took women who came to get an abortion and followed the ones who were able to get the abortion they wanted and followed the ones who were not. And the incidence of um, financial distress, of health problems, of, 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 of losing their jobs, the, the inf was so markedly different. Mm -hmm. The women who got the abortion that they wanted more continued on their life, more or less prospered. The women who were forced to carry the term, it was just the statistics were stunning. And were it's, stunning. It's a matter of death. Yes, that as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, but if look that up if you have a chance. The Scientific American their study it was really uh, uh, informative, really enlightening. What happens? Did they actually develop the scientific method to do it? That that reminds me. I don't. Know, you've heard of the um, University of Chicago story where they they. This was Freakonomics, one of the early ones that said how the child born of a woman who could have had an abortion 
who probably should have had the four shows just turn out terribly. You know, they, they show a lot of real problems of being an unwanted child. It's, it's such a difficult subject to, uh, you know, I'm like, I don't want to think about that study, but the sad news is we have to think about it again. Like you said, for so long, we thought that was behind us. We had Roe versus I, I know in 73, I was a senior in college. I had two friends that were- Is this saying, a question? Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that the, the stories, um, you know, one parents made her get an abortion, but it was like six weeks and, or six months. It was terrible, you know? And but, so this idea of the external locus of control, this is the problem of fascism, is that, you know, your parents, the church, the government, your husband, your abuser, the gang rapist that just raped you. There's an amazing documentary that shows a woman been raped, but she couldn't get her, because of these laws at the state level, they put, they, was it Casey, that the, the, the walls, and you have to have a nurse there and somebody else oh, there. No, and, that was later. Yeah, those, yeah, those slam right. laws, and right. so she, they said, you got to come back in a month, right. you know, I mean, and she's just a poor little gang raped girl, and the, the, the he, this was the last doctor, last abortion doctor in Tennessee, and just the pressures on him to, you know, have to say you have to go because you got to have two nurses here, and the walls have to be this big, and just the unknown negative. Yeah, they've been, they have been, these same anti-abortion forces have been uh, restricting abortion for decades now. Those kinds of laws the have South has been, yeah, right? riddled with it. But, and, and I just want to, everyone here who does support a woman's right to choose with whatever um, permutation you have on that, it is going to be gone if we do not stand up now. If we do not turn the tide in this country, it, it, in response to the person who asked what's going to turn the tide, it is going to be us. Just sitting and, and feeling bad about it, disagreeing with it, it's gone, okay? And all of the suffering that we've talked about, which we've just barely touched upon the surface of it, it is going to magnify and and when they can do this to women, we know who's next. LGBTQ people are next. Trans kids. They're they're out. All right, we're, we're we're having a little trouble with the mic. They got to put a new battery. Um, let's go to rebuttals anyway. Let's go to rebuttals. I'm going to fix the mic real quick. Okay. Um, sorry about that, guys. It's going to take a minute to uh switch out batteries here. So uh, just give me a second while we get the uh thing working let's thank our speakers tonight and uh your problem all right uh i gotta get a night bolt in here somehow so um i don't know we're getting some we're getting some uh feedback from the speaker can you hear me now with the mic okay but we're getting some uh let me change the power source on the speaker there with my help <laughs> Might uh, have some interference from the uh, peanut gallery there. It's just a matter of moving. Hang on a second here. Oh right, yeah, we're gonna re we're gonna rebut in a minute here. As soon as I uh, switch the camera, where's the power? Power source. You, you have to come up to the podium to give a rebuttal. Yeah, that's what we'll do, Charlie. And I heard Tim stirring his iced tea. It came through loud and clear. Mm -hmm. uh, here. I'm trying to some trouble finding my extra powers. Uh, okay, hang on. Let's go a little bit here. All right, can you guys can we can we go can you all right can we get the mic somebody touch the mic out up front please? Oh god come on. Uh, I need a test on the mic up front. 
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Are you getting any, are you getting any? No. All right, let me get the, let me see if I got another nine volt. Damn it, I'm sorry about this guy. Just give me a second, please. Nine volt in here somewhere. What I did. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Is that better? All right, can you guys hear me? Do we have any power? Okay, can you guys hear me now on the mic? What? <coughs> You can't hear yeah, you're okay. What? What happened? Yeah, you're okay. All right. Well, yeah, up and let's get rolling. We will in a second, Charlie. Just give me a second, please. We're not getting any out. Are we getting any output out of the speaker? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, All right. We're not getting. Are we getting anything out of the speakers? All right. We're going to switch to the. Uh, Why don't we just have everybody come up to this? Uh, we also have okay, we can do that. We'll, we'll we'll switch the mic to the podium this way. All right. Careful, careful. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna think we're gonna default. We're gonna turn off the. Can, you, can everybody, okay, hang on just a second. We're, we're making new guys. All right, can, can, can everybody hear you, David? All right, can you all hear me? Can you guys out, can you guys out back hear them? How about how about online? Dave, say something. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna start the rebuttal. Why don't you portion out the time? All right. We'll go about uh, we'll go to about four minutes each. I'll run a clock. Who's got rebuttals? Who's got rebuttals? All right. Raj does. Start with that lady right there. Hey. And then uh, you got one too, uh, Kelvin. Yeah. All right, so we got two online. Uh, we'll start off with here, and then and then we got two more here. So uh, just go ahead and start. We want you to come up to the front. Our speakers will get the last words. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Jan Ludar, and uh, louder, Jan, if you can, please. This one. Oh, I am. I'm Jan Ludar, and I have been in the abortion fight decades since I was fifty, and that's a long time. I don't think it's working. No, that's working for the computer, but not here. Oh, oh okay. So, uh, just, 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 Jan, you got to speak a little louder because we don't have Mike in the room now. Okay. So, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, right after, after Roe v. Wade was passed, Henry Morgenthau, he was the DA in New York City, and uh, there was a big drop in crime about 16 years after Roe v. Wade. And he said, well, maybe, no, it was 16 years after abortion became legal in New York. 
and that was way before Roe v. Wade. I mean, three, three years ago. Okay, but anyway, about 16 or 17 years after abortion became legal in in New York City or New York, Henry Morgenthau said there's been a big drop in crime uh, because all of those people, all of those really alienated people who were unwanted by their parents um, aren't there. They're not there to commit crimes. Uh, and this is his opinion. And this was Henry Morgenthau and he was DA in New York City. And then I wanted to tell another story that I think illustrates what we're trying to say. There was a, you know, in Holland, it's not really unusual for a girl to have a baby. That, you know, and her parents help her and raise the child. And it's not really that unusual. But this is the story about a young girl in Holland and she was pregnant and her, her boyfriend didn't want to have anything to do with the baby. And she, like other girls, she, she wanted her baby. And her parents demanded that she get an abortion. They insisted, they required her to get an abortion. And later on, when she was older, she was, I think about 40, and she was dying of cancer. And she would not even consider having her parents comfort her or anything else from then on. She just kept saying to them, it would have been okay. It would have been okay. And I think this illustrates that uh, it would have been her choice to have had the baby, but outside forces insisted that she abort. And she never, was able to get over it. She grieved for that baby the rest of her life. Okay. Next, uh, Raj, we'll let you go next. Four minutes. Um, I, I, I had understanding when I came here that we'll follow the international theme for Women's Day, equity which is a big, big problem and, and uh, hurts uh, millions of women that uh, they do not have their rights. Uh, and um, there is a, if they do not have their rights normally, I think uh, abortion is, uh, pregnancy and abortion is going to be a very, very difficult situation, but we should be moving on I think uh, with uh, whatever development happening in the science, abortion issue will go away in course of time. And I, I think every time we discuss politically, and democracy discuss politically, we empower the other side and we empower the intellectual and the Supreme Court people. And uh, we, get, we have, it's counterproductive. I think it's going to go away. But the equity of women, women's right, because it's difficult. The women, women, what has happened to women is that they were in a home taking care of baby and home and husband. Now they're taking care of those things, plus they are have to make a living. And uh, lots of women end up when when they get divorced or husband walk away. And that situation is very, very difficult in taking care of baby, having a job, and uh, that is getting a bigger and bigger problem. The last weekend, I was talking to a 78-year-old woman uh, whose husband uh, passed away three years back. And after that, uh, now she's in a, she has a boyfriend and uh, it's a new, three, four months. And I, I, in honesty, had an extensive conversation. I say, what do you want? And uh, she says, well, I want my right, my freedom, because I want to have a boyfriend. I don't want to be the same thing as my husband was, where I did not have the rights. I did not feel that I was equal. And uh, we, we missed that particular thing, the, the, to discuss about that. And I think we should be discussing, you know, I had asked my mother, my mother, I'm, I'm, I'm in the 70s. My, my mother died at 100 year old. 
and uh, I had asked her after my father died, and and I say, what 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 would you what would you say if you were to marry again to my dad? And she says it will not happen because I will insist more on my rights and my equality. And he says I did not have that all my life. Thank you. That is it. Okay. Thank Raj. you, Tim. All right, our next reporter. We can let. The... All right, Raj. We uh, got you. Uh... Can you go up top there, or or, or you have to? All right. You wanna? All right. You wanna? Okay, Sid. Be loud, though. Be loud, Sid. One thing. The United States is an empire in decline. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 for the it's for the audience. Yeah. The United States is an empire in decline, and women in class society have always been second class citizens. For instance, they didn't get the vote since the nineteen twenties. At the longest period of time from 1776 to 1920. And the only way they got it was by demonstrating over long periods of time. And that's how they got it. So the first thing they would do in order to control society it's okay. it's and push society into a fascist mold was to go after women First. It's very logical from that point of view. Another thing, they go after people that are looked down upon, like homosexuality or trans people and minorities, whether it be black, Jewish, Arab, whatever. They go after that first. But then, they get to the real crux of the matter. They go after labor and they make any union a crime. So most people will end up as being slaves. Going back, it's a slavery to a large part. And they use that to go to war. One thing fascism does, it always moves towards war. The United States has been in a war economy for at least 50 to 70 years. And it's still in a war economy. The thing that has reduced the most is armaments, atomic bombs, regular weapons, guns, and things of that nature. But what it wants to do is make tremendous amount of profits. So if you have fascism, you can make people work for very little. And their profits would be in that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're really at. Sydney for president. All right. All right. Who's next? Charlie, you want to go next? I'll go. Right. All right. All right. I'll go. First of all, I'd like to thank both our speakers. Hang on. I, I, I want to be bold there. All right. Kelvin or Charlie, which one wants to go? Well, did you, did, you're the chair. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, let's maintain some order, Tim. Let's go, let go. All right, Charlie, you're up. All right. First of all, beginning again, I would like to thank both our speakers in two respects. Thank you for your presentation and your preparation and well-informed. And secondly, thank you for your efforts on behalf of the rights of half the population 
This is important to sustain their rights, their rights in that regard, which seem to be under attack from certain quarters. Um, I'm not going to belabor this. The late K. Myers, the regular at the college, worked for me in the bookstore, uh, used to contribute $15 to any organization that she liked. I don't know how she arrived at that figure. And I said, you know something, that's a pretty good practice. So I've increased the amount to $25 or more. And I suggest if you support this organization or the similar ones that are out there, I get calls from them. They always get at least something from me to support their activities. I would highly recommend that each and every one of you do so to advance Ooh. human rights issues. Uh, the last thing is, I spend an awful lot of time trying to influence government at the federal, state, and local levels. You have to relent with do, although it may appear discouraging at times, do not let up contacting and pressuring elected officials of any political persuasion. It relentlessly pursue them, uh, even if it seems pointless at times or unsuccessful or having no effect. Do not, in essence, let them off the hook and continue that and hopefully you will see conversions or even strengthen those supporters. I assure you, you've got to reinforce your supporters out there that you're making an effort. Of course, you want to focus on those who are trying to get the switch and so forth, but do not let the elected officials a pass on this issue. Keep pursuing it even though at times it may look like you're not achieving anything and keep your issue alive in that regard. Otherwise, you are admitting defeat and surrendering the field of battle. Victors are the ones who control the field of battle at the end, and that's the status that you want to achieve. We've got forces of darkness out there and they must be countered because they are gonna be doing it uh, it appears on their own and looking to control the deciding officials. Anyhow, thank you again. Come back and give us a report later on on your activities. Thank you. Okay, uh, next. We got somebody from the peanut gallery. You want to go next, Ellen? Go right ahead. Sure, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, very short one. Um, All right, Kelvin, we'll let you go on and Ellen will let you go. Go ahead, Kelvin. Yeah, very short one. Just a rebuttal to the guy who was talking about state-sponsored abortion might be some form of slavery. Um, if it is, it's a very, very uh, cheap. It's a it's a cheaper option because if you think about it, if you if it wasn't for the abortion, you're going to be spending like twelve years of education, not to mention your um, uh, the, the burden on any welfare services and you're going to have, by, by, by definition, you're going to have more involvement of law, uh, law enforcement and, and penal services. So to put it very, very bluntly, um, if you remember the Elvis song in the ghetto, right, well, here's an alternative version. On a cold and grey Chicago morn, a woman went to the clinic. The end. Okay, is that it, Kelvin? Yeah. All right, Ellen, if you're ready, go ahead. We'll give you four minutes. Right. Uh, Loud, uh, Ellen, so we can hear you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Jay. Uh, Jay was a real inspiration to me. I met her here uh, with the Refuse Fascism movement, and um, I had I'd been looking for an anti-fascist group, and uh, that was the only one that I could find. And, you know, I'm a, my background is market research and analysis, you know, to read, I came here to work for ad agencies, strategic planner, read the sociology of the situation. And 
what I've noticed is that this, you know, 10 years or so, um, but probably before that, that fascism, it's invisible, you know, and they have, but it's a communication strategy that has been in place since the Cold War, the end of World War II, at least, you know, but they, um, they, you know, the anti-Catholic, the um, movement, the, or no, anti-communist, you know, but they brought real Nazis. It's not just a name, it's a reality. They brought Mengele to South America. They brought Barbie, it, the worst war criminals, Reinhard Gellin, Hitler himself, Martin Foreman, were all brought to South America. They put them, they used it to bring about the Fourth Reich, which is what we're living in now. World War III was the Cold War. Now we're in the Fourth Reich, where this is the Fourth World War. They, it's invisible. It was the greatest strategy in the world, but they they did it by, it's the media. You know, Orwell was right. That's why I'm so passionate about this place, you know, on the media, that we need a free speech forum. This is the only one I can find, the, you know, and it's complicated here, but, uh, you know, the, we have to speak out and we have to practice that about fascism and these things. But I was a teacher, we were supposed to be teaching mass media, how to understand the media, how to write, how to read, how to understand. And what you're seeing is that their great secret strategy is using the media to dumb us down and the divide us, you know, the atomize us, separate us, make it you know and it's but the media can have power if you see it I, people have to see the jane club a new movie that once you saw the way people in chicago a woman who was going to die but they the doctor couldn't give her an abortion and so they she's a very straight catholic and all this you know eventually started it's a true story and we need to get it going again it's so inspiring that they would pick each other up. There was a nun there. There was women, black women. They all came together. And that's, if women came together, that would make all the difference in the world. You know, yeah, look at these pictures. And you know, I recently, done my ancestry, discovered I'm descended from Pocahontas. And right, and actually they kidnapped her, the colonists, you know, and get, raped her, made her have a baby. This was their trick. They, then they take the baby, they took her back to England, then she wants, comes back and they think she was poisoned. You know, they just, they bring the baby back and make, she was a princess, make him king. And then they colonize it. This is fascism. You know, this is empire. This is colonialism. This is, you know, patriarchy or feudalism. And, you know, we think we, we you know, won our rights and we're the perfect democracy. But actually, the truth is America is the big fascist liar of the world. We're and they're just keeping it all covered up. You know, in Chile, you know, 20,000, everybody spoke up. They use our software, Facebook, to find them, you know, round them up, take them to the thing and torture them and kill them. It's terrorism. This is a war of terror. And by doing this to women, they're, it's, it's terrorizing women and it's, you can see where it's going to go from there. All right, next. Okay. Okay, next. You go. We got our next speaker up here. Go ahead. Let's get up top, and we'll. Uh, we're running a clock, so. All right. We'll, uh, uh, well, you're up. You're ready to go. We'll get you next. We'll get him, and then we'll get you. Okay. I thought you wanted to speak. All right. Go ahead. I'll, I I I got your time. Don't worry. Okay. Thanks. All right. No, you just just may speak loud, okay? So the whole audience can hear you. Sure. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the presentation because we got basic <laughs> civics wrong. We talk about the Supreme Court decision with uh, Dobbs as if the primary thing we need to worry about is policy. What we need to worry about is did they read the law correctly? It's not about policy, it's about what the law is. Roe v. Wade was badly decided because there is no constitutional protection for abortion. You can argue that it's good policy, that's fine, but 
the Supreme Court is not where you go to do policy. That's uh, Schoolhouse Rock 101. Um, the other thing, how many times has the wage gap been debunked? It has been debunked over and over and over again. The idea with the wage gap is that? women don't make as much as men, as if sexism or structural oppression is the reason for it. It is. The reason for it is they choose different careers. They work fewer hours. They choose different jobs. Uh, slavery as the loss of bodily autonomy. Um, you know, I kind of agree with that, but what I would, I would, with the taxonomy, I would reverse it. It's that slavery is a kind of loss of bodily autonomy. Not all losses of bodily autonomy are slavery, but all slavery is a loss of bodily autonomy. Um, the, one of the really disturbing things is like probably over a dozen, maybe a couple dozen times, the word fascist thrown around just gratuitously. Um, that's, that's extremely dangerous because really with certain interest groups, fascist is just the word, the container word we use for that thing I don't like, the thing I want to pollute and say that it's bad without offering a proper argument. Uh, if fascism is about imposing your will, no matter what the law is, then I think there are way more cases to be made for fascism coming from, quote unquote, the other side. Um, I would like to recommend some books because if, if the idea is that women are oppressed and women need to stand up for their rights, um, I would see if we can maybe read some antidote literature here. We have Who Stole Feminism by Christina Hoff Summers. I believe that was published in 1994. We have The War Against Boys, How Misguided Feminism is Harming Our Young Men by Christina Hoff Summers. That was in 2000. And right now, the one that I'm reading is Dr. Helen Smith's Men on Strike, Why Men Are Boycotting Marriage, Fatherhood, and the American Dream and Why It Matters. And it's important to read these things as an antidote to toxic feminism. And the, and the, the, the biggest, it is a supremacy movement. You heard from the presenter herself that, sure, it's totally exclusively the woman's option whether or not to carry the baby to term but if she does she can obligate the man for 18 years to pay for it you can't have it both ways either it's exclusively her decision which means she is exclusively financially responsible for that decision or the man gets a veto on whether or not she gets an abortion if he gets forced to be put on the hook for it thank you okay what okay i think we got our mic back now we're going to get this back here in a minute. I'm going to give a brief uh, form. Okay. Anything like that. I think, okay. We have, we have, yeah, we got power again. Good. Okay. I'm going to keep the mic up there. I'm going to keep this down. All right. I'm going to take a completely crazy point of view on this stuff. And that is I, I, ever, ever since the women had had the right to vote, they've had a little too much power. <laughs> you see, the, the thing is, is that uh, Rush Limbaugh called the movement of the Nazis. You see, we, we allow women to drive. Look at the way the accident rates have increased. We, uh, we've also, we've also, I, I, that's, that's kind of why I've got to give it a little bit, a little bit facetious. The thing is, Saudi Arabia did a disservice when they let women drive. I don't want to I'll keep it up there. Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, uh, let's thank our speakers tonight. I was trying to raise a little bit of community here. You know, I've obviously not done just that. So, uh, a bit more of that, You know, we're going to say, who else has a rebuttal? All right, Dave, come on up, and then we'll let Andy go next. <laughs> Uh, I know. <laughs> All right, Dave, you're next. I realize that Todd, Todd frowns on personal attacks, but I will say this. Horseman who hurts him, 
<laughs> all right, Dave, go ahead. Uh, with regard, first of all, the business about uh, when they're earning less than that. Yes, they do earn less than men. And they aren't the only group in this country that earns less than the majority. Whereas for many years, we're paying less than white people. And you can count, call on after group after group where, where, they, where they got counted out and the ruling class got paid more than anybody else. So I'm sorry, I don't go along with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it isn't only just him. Speaker prior to you was the one who pointed out, <laughs> uh, pointed out the, the, that, that again, that there was some, some discrepancy here. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's well known that women that paid less than men for doing, for doing the same work for the guys now. Wow. And, <laughs> and I think that's I think that's pretty well self-evident. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, all right. Is that it, Dave? Yeah, I think so. Too. All right. Andy, let's go. We'll give you four minutes, sir. Okay. Uh for those of you that don't know me, uh since about 1980, my hobby has been translating books into one page readable summaries. So nobody has time to read 20 books on a subject. So there's a lot of knowledge out there in books that never gets to the major media. And every year there's a book published from Sonoma State on the top 25 blacked out stories that would change America overnight if they were covered them, rather than blacked out times of century. And so in that light, the elephant in the room that nobody ever talks about on this subject on the subject of sex in America is our kids are taught from the ground up the wages of sin is pregnancy and death. The wages of sin is pregnancy and death. You are either risk getting an infection of some kind or you're going to risk uh, a woman will get risk, risk getting pregnant. Well, they've known in other countries for years what was published in a book in 1983 about the two kinds of sex you can have. One is pregnancy related. The other is non-pregnancy, non-infectious sex, what teenagers used to call heavy pet. Well, this is a book for couples. It's called ESO, Sex and Sexual Organ. So I'll give you the 25-word translation of that book if you don't have time to read it or look it up. The book teaches you and your partner take turns. Don't try to have orgasms at the same time. So you take turns, experiment. You find out what feels good when you touch it. You touch it till you feel good, you touch it till you feel better, and you touch it till you pass out. And if you go at a certain speed, both men and women, and you take turns giving your partner ultimate pleasure, you can maintain somebody in a state of sexual orgasm for 10, 15, 20 minutes. This sounds like science fiction to people who have never experienced it, but it's real. Millions of people have bought that book since 1983. It was uh, written for couples. There's a chapter in there because it came out in 83 in the age of AIDS. There's a chapter called Safe Sex in the Age of AIDS. You know, practice safe sex, just not sticking a penis in anything for at least six months until you know that you're both HIV negative. Of course, that's all gone by the wayside because we know now that HIV is not infectious. But at any rate, uh, you know, it, it, Project Center blew the whistle on the AIDS epidemic in 1995, if you all didn't know that. They said the HIV testing network is the largest medical disaster in US history. The test was used to tell people they're positive. It reacts to all kinds of particles in your blood when you're sick, and it doesn't test for HIV. Up until COVID came along, and what they're doing, the HIV test was considered the largest medical fraud in human history. That's baloney. information blacked him out. I don't want to listen to Charlie uh, trying to try to um, As I said, I translate databases, not an opinion. Well, I'm not I'm not giving you any opinion from me. It's a summary of thousands of scientists that have worked on these various different topics. And so if young people were caught from day one, like I think a lot of young people in Europe, I, as I understand it, they don't have a fraction of unwanted pregnancies in many countries of Europe, or what they have here, because they're taught you can have sex and give somebody pleasure without making a baby. 
you know, when people in America get the other, everybody's not thinking, oh, let's make a baby now. Let's, you know, they're thinking, uh, let's steal drop. Like, because human contact is essential for uh, mental health, a healthy sex life among young people, especially when they get to, you know, puberty age is normal. And they teach that in Europe. It's normal over there. But here, the wages of sin is pregnancy and death. That's it. And it's to me, that's one of the top five blacked out stories in American history. Okay. The elephant in the room. I mean, if we talked about that, you could eliminate 99% of abortions. What would be left is the forcible rape. But for people that are having consensual sex, there's no reason to risk pregnancy ever. You would go years without okay. ever risking pregnancy. Is everybody clear on that? Pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not really. I, I don't yeah. fully understand this. What, what, Charlie? I don't fully really understand this new type of intimacy. Oh, well, why good. didn't you ever talk about it, Charlie? <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, who else? I don't think I like it. I like the old right. fashioned guy. Speaker gets the last okay. word. Okay. Uh, a lot of good points were made. Um, I think the speaker's working. Yeah, it's I mean, not, uh, yeah, because it's just. I think it was Kevin spoke about forced abortion. I don't know about forced abortion, but this country has a long history of sterilization, uh, sterilizing uh, black and brown and Native American women. Uh, it was still on the books in North Carolina until 1960 something, where mentally feeble women could be sterilized, not only without their uh, permission, but without their knowledge. So. Uh, that's, that's a, a, a good um, point to bring into this discussion. And I think the point about uh, sex education, these same right-wing theocratic groups are opposed to sex education. Just say no, that's the, that's the ticket. Um, and they're, they're, doing, they're doing that right now in Texas and Florida, banning real sex education, real biology from uh, the school system. And it's disastrous. And that's part of a more illustration that what is at stake here is not unwanted pregnancy. What is at stake here is women's role in society. That's what's at stake here. And that role is going to be pregnant. And I think your the points about um, uh, as, as sex is um, punishment. You know, we, we grew up, most of us in this country grew up in some form of Christianity. And what was Eve's punishment for eating from the tree of knowledge? To, to suffer in pregnancy. That is Eve's punishment. So you deserve it. If that's what happens to you. Um, and abortion, no, no. Taking actual control of what your role in society is going to be, um, that is what is really at stake. At stake here. Are women going to be full participants in society or are we going to be slammed back into patriarchal subjugation? And as several speakers said, that's just the, the, the tip of the iceberg, or that's just one part of what this agenda has in mind. They are already affirmative action out of here, gone. Yeah. Diversity, any kind of quote, critical race theory. That's just a code word for American history, okay? That's what's not going to be allowed. Their version of uh, Disneyland history. Uh, I, I guess I can't say that. Since they're at, at uh -huh. Disneyland, too. Um, and, I, and I think there is... Uh, we were talking over here about public opinion, and it, it's absolutely public opinion is so much in favor of abortion uh, over 60 percent uh, abortion in general uh, the vast majority of, of people in this country what I am afraid of is the belief the assumption that that will prevent abortion from being uh, outlawed and it won't and it isn't the Supreme Court didn't care. And you want to talk about the law, constitutional rights. Most of us in this room would not have a constitutional right to vote. Okay. You want to find it. You want to be an originalist. 
then we're back to slavery. Women don't vote. Men who don't have property don't vote. There's, you want to talk about what's in the written constitution? No, it, that's backwards. And I'm not going there. If you want to read Dobbs' decision, and it is a violation of precedent, up one side and down the other. Now, I'm not talking policy, okay? Um, but we will kid ourselves if we think public opinion in, in uh, inactive, passive public opinion will save abortion rights, will save women's ability to participate in society. It has not and it will not. And that's why we have said a blue wave is not enough. We need a green wave. It never, public opinion didn't win the right to vote for women. It was year long struggle. It was a hunger strike. Okay. It was being arrested. It was being beat by the police. All of that to even get the right to vote. And many of us, most of us here, saw what it took for, for, for Black people to even get officially to do away with Jim Crow. That is what it takes. And that's where we're at. It's going to take rising up for abortion rights. International Women's Day is, a, is really important started in this country even though it's been completely suppressed we're reviving it it will be all over the world and here in chicago we will be at state and jackson at 3 p.m on wednesday march 8th i urge everyone to come out if you believe that abortion is a right that women that that women illegitimate that, that overturning of our right to abortion was illegitimate and that legal abortion on demand and without apology should be the right of every person so thank you okay want to dismiss this david all right all right david dismiss this i know justin you're there but uh what do you mean? I'm about no, ready no. To dismiss dismiss us yeah he's gonna get us he's gonna devil us out charlie we'd like to thank all of you for coming out uh tonight we hope to see you all next week, the next week's program. What's the Thank program? You. What is the program, Charlie? Oh, uh, next week is Community Renewal Society. Oh, all right, we'll see you all next Renew week. Renew your community. Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to stop the recording.